All right, good afternoon. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, my name is Mark Randall. I run the indices team at the JSE. I've been doing that particular role for about three or four years. So I have the great pleasure of talking to you about indices. Um, it, it's a topic that, that hopefully will interest you a little bit. It interests me a great deal, I must, I must be honest. So if we, if we get to sort of three or four hours down the line and I'm still giving you pages and pages of numbers and charts, then please stop me and say, this isn't interesting anymore. Give me something interesting. Um, but we'll see how we go. All right. Um, I, I, I think just on the questions, um, if, if you have any particular questions about maybe one of the slides that I put up, something that I haven't explained properly, I, I think maybe you can stop me then. We'll pick that up. But any sort of conceptual questions or border reaching questions, let's leave for, for afterwards. Um, you f feel free to ask me and, and don't be offended if I say I'm not going to answer that now. I'll answer it later. Um, please just remind me later. All right. Um, maybe before I get going, can, can we just see by show of hands, was anybody at our presentation last month? Or are we all here for the first time for this presentation? That is fantastic because my slides are the same. <laughs> at least the first half of them. So none of you will be bored. Um, so let's go. All right, this is what I want to cover this afternoon. Um, five sort of simple questions. The first one, what is an index at a very broad level? Um, I think this is uh, it's something that you probably hear of quite often. So I just want to give you some of the core principles behind indices. Who does what is an interesting one. Um, and that's really about this whole sort of um, financial services structure that we have with all these different firms that do all sorts of different things. So I'll just spend a few minutes of talking about who the different role players in the industry are. Um, basically, when something goes wrong, who do you want to phone and who does what? Um, I'm going to spend a very short time on, on index basics, what to look for in the rules, some of the things that we, that we consider when we construct indices. I'm then going to spend quite a bit of time on some SA sector indices. So every month we pick up a different set of indices. Uh, last month we did the top 40. This month we're going to be doing SA sector. Um, and then questions obviously will hold for the end. All right, let's jump right into it. What is an index? This is actually something that's really, really, really simple. Um, I, I think you, you may have heard of indices. You may have seen them on the screen. You would have heard of CPI, the Consumer Protection Index, uh, uh, um, price index rather, consumer price index, and a whole bunch of different things. At the end of the day, an index really is a basket of goods. So if you consider you walk into your spa, you pick up one liter of milk, one loaf of bread, um, Sasco in my house, we Sasco fans, and let's say 18 eggs, free range I hope, put them all in your basket, you've got one of each, you go to the till and you pay let's say 55 Rand for those things, that thing you can see as a price. Now, if you go the next month and buy exactly the same three things, one loaf of bread, two liters of milk, a box of eggs, and you pay 57 Rand for exactly the same three items, you can start to make some kind of conclusion about price levels, so to speak. So that basket of goods has increased in price over the period. All right, now obviously nobody's going to go to spa and buy exactly those three things every month, month in and month out, but as a model that represents average price levels, it can be useful. And that's exactly what CPI is out of interest. So what the um, Status A has done is picked a basket of goods that they say is indicative of, of the South African economy, one of this, one of that, two of those, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they track those prices month in and month out. And that basket of goods increases in price, um, never down, unfortunately, but increases in price over time. And they publish that number as an index. When we get to the financial world, to capital markets, it is exactly the same thing. So all an index is is a set of securities, a set of bonds, a set of assets, uh, maybe gold, maybe the commodities in there. It's a, a set of things, a basket of things. And all we do is we work out an average price for those goods and we publish that price. And at the end of the day, that's all an index is. Now, the beauty about indices is that, first of all, first of all, anybody can do it. I mean, we happen to publish indices for a living, but you can do this in your own home with Excel. You can use any kind of um, tracking software to do it. You can pick a basket of securities, work out a price over time, a portfolio, if you like, a notional portfolio, and track it, and that is an index. So you can make your own indices. Um, obviously, we do that for you, um, and we publish some indices. There's several index providers. Um, the JSC is one of them, but there are others operating in, in, the, in the country. It's not a monopoly or regulated in any way. Anybody can work out this price. Um, and really, some of the benefits, um, or not some of the benefits, rather, some of the questions that you need to ask, obviously, is, what stocks are getting picked for a particular index. So you can pick one index up, the top 40, for example. There are a few questions you're going to ask. What is inside that index? What are the 40 stocks? What are the rules that go into making that thing? Um, and then secondly, how do you calculate the average? 
and there are different formulas that we use for calculating that average price that can be equally weighted or, or market cap weighted, and we'll speak about some of those. I think one of the key questions is why even bother, or you know, why even do this? And, and the answer is that there's a couple of reasons. So I mean, the first one is if you, if you think about the JSE, for example, we've got, I don't know, 400 listed instruments on the exchange, um, equities that you can buy. Um, there's over a thousand bonds you can buy, there's uh, single stock futures, there's all sorts of different things. So if you now look and say, all right, now what instruments went up today and what instruments went down, and you'll end up with a pile of 600 on this side and 400 on that side, and then you say, well, is that good or is that bad? You know, did the market go up today? What does that even mean? So an index gives you a barometer to say, I can start telling you something about price movements over time. The market has gone up today because the basket of goods between yesterday and today has gone up just like in your trolley. So that's one reason. Another useful reason for an index is to say, well, if you go and give your money to an active fund manager, or you invest it in your cousin's car business, or whatever you do with your money, and you get a return of, say, 10% per year, is that a good number? And it's very difficult to answer that question because it may feel like a lot of money, but is it good? And the only way you can really truly answer that question is if you compare it to something. And that's when index comes in. So, for example, we create an all-share index, which has got the top 99% of all of our companies in that index. And that's a very good market barometer. If you want to compare your performance of your portfolio of equities to something, the all-share index is a very good measure to do that. So, if you got 10%, but the all-share index returned 15% over the same period, you probably want to look for a new investment advisor. Okay? Or unpack exactly why that happened and what were the risk factors and why were you different from the index. Okay, so it's useful for that. Um, the, third, the third useful point about an index um, really comes back to the sort of metaphor of a basket of eggs, in that if you decide, all right, I think in South Africa banks are going to do well. I've done some research, I've spoken to some people, I've looked at the economy, people need to borrow. I think banks are going to do well, so I want to invest my money into the banking sector. Now, option one is to say, all right, I'll take all of my money and I'll invest it in one bank. Now, if you pick FNB, for example, that may be good. If you happen to have picked African Bank, not so good. All right. So as soon as you're putting all of your money into one instrument, you run the risk of something very specific happening to that company. That's got nothing to do with the entire financial sector or the entire economy. There may be a problem with a director. They may have had a failed business. There may be bad debts. Whatever the case is, individual companies fail or do badly. I mean, they don't have to go bankrupt, but they could just do badly. So if you're investing in a basket of things, what's going to happen is those individual problems in one company will be offset by the equal and opposite effects in other companies. So for example, if one company does badly, let's say um, MTN does very badly, you may find that Vodacom picks up because all the customers move from one to the other. So if you've got a basket of these things, you tend to, I suppose, diversify that very specific risk by putting all your money in one basket. Okay, so that's one of the other benefits from an investor is you get this exposure, this diversification without having to go and pick individual stocks and decide how to allocate your money. Of course, there is a saying about don't put all your eggs in one basket, um, so I'll leave that with you. I thought it was a good metaphor.